Hello friends, this is Kumar and I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel. Friends, in this video we are going to analyze a poem, a very important poem, A Far Cry from Africa, which has been written by Derek Walcott. In this video we are going to discuss something about the writer, his poetic technique, about his country and some basic introduction of the poem. Plus we are going to analyze the poem line by line in detailed explanation. So this video is going to be very important for you if you are a literature student. Kindly watch the video till the end so that you will get all the information that we are going to discuss in this poem. So let us start the video without wasting any time. First of all, we should know about the writer about whom we are discussing in this poem. Derek Walcott is a Nobel Prize winning writer. He won the Nobel Prize in 1992 uh, and uh, he was born on 1930 and he died on 2017. He was a poet, playwright and theater director. He was born in Castries, which is the capital island of St. Lucia, part of the Caribbean island. Now, his father was a civil servant and talented painter and he died when Volkut was only one year. His mother was a teacher who nurtured the talents of her children. He was highly opposed to violence. That's why he has criticized the Mau Mau of a rebellion in this political poem. He founded the Trindad Theatre Workshop, originally called Little Carib Theatre Workshop in 1959. He was very much influenced by Hardy, T.S. Eliot and even more by W.H. Auden. He came from mixed ancestry which means he was of English and Black West Indian. Okay, so he had both kind of uh, you know blood in his veins. Linguistically he had took conflicting traditions, he speaks English, French and Creole. French Creole means Patwa. He is very fascinated by language just like Dylan Thomas. Now Robert Graves says about him, Derek Walcott handles English with a closer and understanding of its inner magic than most, if not any of his contemporaries. His father's friend artist Harold Simmons prompted him to use both brush and pen. Now let us discuss something about Walcott and his poetry. Now, poetry for him was a prayer, a religious vocation for him. He was highly concerned about the young writers who, you know, who were being restricted by universities from uh, using rhyme and rhythm. Also, he uh, discouraged individualism and experimentation in the works of young writers. He advises against belligerence and historical sullenness. He was opposed to bellicose black power solutions also against demeaning patronage. Now we should know something about his country St. Lucia also, a country which do not has, which do not have any history. Now Volkot does not, uh, Volkot does not find one but uh, you know what create one out for himself, it means St. Lucia doesn't have its own identity. So he tries to find out one identity for, for, for himself. So he creates one out for himself, his circumstances and his birthright. He assimilates and expresses the disparate elements of a rich social milieu. He breaks Naipaul's assertion that nothing has been created in the West Indies. In an autobiographical poem, Another Life, he, uh, he describes the unchronicled St. Lucian landscape by performing Adam's task of giving things their names. He is unapologetic about foreign influences as in the Caribbean culture or mimicry. Now let us know something about the poem A Far Cry from Africa. Now this poem A Far Cry from Africa was published in 1962 and it was written during 1950s. In this poem he addresses the Mau Mau uprisings in Kenya from 1952 to 1960. The title of this poem could be meaning a cry you know heard from a distance or something notable different or it can also mean the effect being different from what was intended. Okay, about the uprising, obviously. Okay, now this poem is basically on British and African violence that took place during Mamo uprisings. In this poem, he has tried to find out the question of hybridity and inheritance. So, it is a very important poem. Now, let us go to the poem and discuss the poem in detail, line by line. Now friends, before we begin this poem, let us something know about the Mau Mau Rebellion on which this poem is based. 
So as I told you, the Mau Mau Rebellion was started in 1952 and it ended in 1960. This war is also known as Mau Mau Uprising, Mau Mau Revolt, or Kenyan Emergency. This war was, you know, taken place between Kenyan Land and Freedom Army, also known as KLFA, also known as Mau Mau, and the British authorities. Now, the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army were actually the Kikuyu people. There is a Kikuyu tribe in Africa in Kenya. So, the Kikuyu people they were divided in two parts. They were divided in two, you know, two parts. One was uh, the one was uh, one was were the against the Britishers, and there were few of them who were with the Britishers. So, it was kindly uh, a kind of war between the rebels and the so-called loyalists. Now, let us discuss the poem in detail, line by line. A far cry from Africa. By Derek Walcott, a wind is ruffling the towny pelt. A wind is ruffling the towny pelt of Africa. Kikui, kuk as flies, beaten upon the blood, beaten upon the blood streams of the pelt. Now, a wind can be meaning uh, uprising here. Ruffling means tent, while towny means light brown to brownish color. Wilt means an uncultivated land. Wilt means an uncultivated land. So, in the first three lines, uh, the poet depicts the poem setting on the African plain or wilt means an uncultivated land. Uh, you know, an uncultivated land. The nation itself is compared to an animal, perhaps a lion with a towny belt. Towny, as I told you, is a color described as light brown to brownish orange. That is common color in the African landscape. The word Kikuyu serves as the name of a native tribe in Kenya, but seems an idyllic portrayal of the African plain. Kikuyu shifts. Okay, so what seems an idyllic portrayal of the uh, African plain? Kikuyu shifts. The Kikuyu, uh, the Kikuyu are uh, you know compared to flies buzzing around the animal of Africa, who are feeding on blood, which is present in large enough amounts to create streams. Corpses are scattered through a paradise. Only the worm, kernel of carrion, cries. Waste no compassion on these separate dead. So, corpses are scattered through a paradise. Only the worm. Worm means worms are here compared to British. So, kernel of carrion, cries. So, it means uh, carrion means a dead body or carcass. So it is the use of alliteration here. Colon of carrion cries. Okay. So it is a use of alliteration here. Base no compassion on these separate dead. So here he personifies worms. Here he personifies worms. Okay. So uh, Volkot shatters the image of a paradise that many associate with Africa by describing a landscape littered with corpses. He adds a sickening detail by referring to a bomb. Or uh, maggot, the trains in this setting of decaying human flesh. The bomb's admonishment to base no compassion on it the, on these separate dead is puzzling in that it implies the victim somehow got what they derived. Now, statistics justify and scholars sees the salience of colonial policy. What is that to the white child hacked in bed? Hag means killed to savages. Savages are here referred to Kikus, British, and Germany as well. To savages, expendable as Jews. So uh, it is a use of metaphor technique here. Okay. So uh, the mention of the words justify and colonial policy, when taken in context with the preceding six lines, finally clarifies the exact event that Walcott is describing. Means. The Mau Mau uprising against British colonists in Kenya during the 1950s, as I told you earlier in the in the in the introduction part of the poem. Now, where earlier the speaker seemed to blame the victims, he now blames those who forced the colonial system into onto Kenya and polarized the population. They cannot justify their actions because the reasons will never matter to the white child who has been murdered merely because of his color. In retaliation by Mau Mau fighters or to the savages, who in as resist an attitude as was taken by Nazis against Jews are deemed worthless or expendable. 
Here, savages is a controversial term that derives from the French word sauvage, meaning wild, and is now wholly derogatory in English. Volcourt's use of savage functions to present a British colonialist racist point of view. Thrashed out by beaters, the long gracious break. Thrashed means to beat. In a white dust of ibises whose cries have healed since civilization's dawn. Ibises is a long build wedding words. Now, Volcourt shifts gears in these lines and returns to images of Africans' wildlife. In a reminder that the ibises, which is a long build wedding words, and other beasts ruled this land long before African or European civilization existed. The, po the poet also describes a centuries-old hunting custom of natives working in a line through the long grass and beating it to flush out prey. Such killing for sustenance is set against the senseless and random death that native Africans and European settlers perpetrate upon each other. From the parched river or beast teeming plain, from the parched river, parched river means dried up or beast teeming plain. Beast teeming plain means that land, uh, the, the land that has a lot of animals. The violence of beast on beast is read as natural law. What upright man seeks his divinity by inflicting pain. Delirious as these worried beasts, delirious means disturbed state of mind. So delirious as these worried beasts, his woes dance to the tightened carcass of a drum while he calls courage till that native dread of the white beast contracted by the dead. So these lines are simultaneously pro-nature and anti-culture. Animals kill merely for food and survival, but humans having perfected the skill of hunting for food extend that violent act to other areas using force to exert control and prove superiority over other people. They seek divinity by deciding who lives and who dies. Ironically, wars between people are described as following the beat of a drum, an instrument made of an animal hide uh, uh, stretched over a cylinder. Volkut also points out that for whites, historically, peace has not been the result of a compromise with an opponent, but a situation arrived at because the opposition has been crushed and cannot resist anymore. Now let us go to the next stanza. That is, a game brutish necessity wipes its hands upon the napkin of a dirty cause. Again, a waste of our compassion as bits pain. So, uh, in this poem, these lines are difficult to interpret, but uh, they appear to be aimed at those judging the Mau Mau uprising from a distance. Observers who could somehow accept brutality as a necessary and who are aware of a dire situation but by their hands or refuse to become involved in it now the poet appears to condemn such an attitude by comparing the Mau Mau uprising to the spanish civil war which took place in 1936 to 1939 leaders of france and great britain wanted to avoid another war that would engulf all of europe so they introduced a non-intervention pact that was signed by 27 nations Nonetheless, the insurgents or nationalists under the leadership of General Francisco Franco were aided by and received military aid from Germany and Italy. The loyalists or republicans had no such backing. They fought valiantly but were outmanned, lost territory and were eventually defeated in March of 1939. Here in this stanza, brutish necessity wipes its hands. So here he has use the technique of personification okay so the line 25 that is the gorilla wrestles with the superman here a cynical the poet presents a cynical view of the mau mau uprising just as another colonial conflict where gorillas negatively animalized africans fights with superman a negative characterization of europe i who am poisoned with the blood of both where shall i turn divided to the vein, I who have cursed the drunken officer of British rule, how choose between this Africa and the English tongue I love? Betray them both or give back but they give. How can I face such slaughter and be cool? How can I turn from Africa 
एंड लिव नाउ दिस लास्ट स्टांजा इज अ चेंज ऑफ सीन फ्रॉम प्राइमरीली दैट ऑफ अफ्रीका टू दैट ऑफ द पोइट हिमसेल्फ वर्कआउट बींग अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ बोथ अफ्रीकन एंड इंग्लिश हेरिटेज एज आई टोल्ड यू बिफोर इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द पोइम इज डॉन बिकॉज ही डज नॉट नो हाउ टू फील अबाउट द माउ मो स्ट्रगल ही सर्टेनली इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद द स्टॉक रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ दोज फ्रॉम द आउटसाइड वोलकोट इज सिकेंड बाय द बिहेवियर ऑफ माउ माउ जस्ट एज ही हैज बीन डिस्गस्टेड बाय द ब्रिटिश बाय द एंड द पोइट्स डेलेमा इज नॉट रीज कंसल्ट बट वन गेट्स द सेंस दैट वोलकोट विल अवेंडन नाइदर अफ्रीका नॉर ब्रिटेन so friends our present poem a very very important poem a far cry from africa finally and sir i hope you understand the poem and the and about the poet as well if you understand the poem if you like the video then please like share and comment on the video and please subscribe the channel to support us as much as you can we'll come soon with next video uh, you know with another topic till then subscribe the channel and stay tuned Thank you very much for watching the video and have a great day